I'm Dr. Michael Coughlin, Director of the Coughlin Foot and Ankle Clinic here at St. Alphonsus Hospital. We've asked you to view this video either because you're a candidate for surgery or you have the need for prescription pain medicine. Orthopedic surgery, in fact, any surgery can be very, very painful. You should be aware of this and the use of pain medicine is to mitigate that somewhat. We recognize this. It's probably much more painful to have orthopedic surgery than most other surgery like abdominal surgery, spine surgery, and other surgical procedures. So it's our goal to help you through this difficult time when we want to reduce your pain, but simultaneously we want to keep you safe from the side effects and complications of both your surgery and the pain medicine that you take. Pain is always associated with broken bones and surgical procedures, but in a number of hours or days, that pain level will drop down to a tolerable level, but initially this time can be pretty tough. We need to be realistic. On the 10 point pain scale that we use, this is 10 and this is zero, and it's not going to be zero. That's just not realistic. It may be that it hangs around in this five to six range, and that's all you're going to achieve. That may be enough though to get you through the difficult time. Don't have unrealistic expectations about having no pain. Other things that will help you will be immobilization and rest and elevation. All these things can reduce pain, but the passage of time, I believe, is the key element in eventual pain reduction. And other things like anti-inflammatory medication and Tylenol can help. Narcotics are not the only source of pain relief. These are just examples of things that can help, like anti-inflammatory medications. Talk to your physician about other means to diminish the pain you experience without just using narcotics. Opioids are strong pain medicines used around the time of surgery to alleviate or reduce pain. Common names are oxycodone, Percocet, hydrocodone, Norco, Vicodin, and many others. You should be aware of these different names. You may have these prescriptions ordered for you in the time just after surgery, but these are not long-term prescriptions, and there are risks involved in taking these medications. On your bottle will be instructions as to how to take these medications, but it's very important and wise to have someone with you when you are taking these narcotics. So let's talk about the risks because they're very, very real. You're a player in this game. You want to reduce your pain, but you want to avoid any complications in the short and the long run. These are the things I think that you should be aware of. So first of all, let's talk about the goals of narcotic treatment. You should have medications from only one physician. It's your responsibility to have safe storage and have them dispensed by your partner. You should dispose of unused medications. Now the goals of treatment are really restoration of function and your safety. Let's talk about the effects of pain medicine on things your sleep, mood, your working relationships, and even driving are things that can change. Whenever you're on these medications, the next step is discontinuing them when you don't need them. And you should be weighing the risks and benefits all the time. The absolute limit of opioid treatment is six to 12 weeks. There's certainly risks of misuse and abuse. Overdosing can be one of the most serious. The prior use of drugs and alcohol can change your tolerance, but I want you to know that four of five heroin users started with opioid prescriptions. That's terrible. Since 1999, the rate of opioid overdose has quadrupled in the United States. In the U.S., 80 patients die every day from opioid overdose. And how about here in Idaho? Well, one of our citizens in Idaho dies every 39 hours from an opioid overdose. Our rate has tripled since the year 2000. And what's terribly disturbing to me is that 16% of high school students report non-prescription use of opioids, and we rank fourth in the 50 states in non-prescription use. That's really an embarrassment for us, and we need to do much better. Now let's talk about potential risks, though. The side effects on a short-term basis with these medications are constipation, cognitive impairment, tolerance and physical dependence, and especially impairment of motor skills or driving or even at work, and then finally dependence and addiction. 
There's a definite risk of drug interactions. Such categories as benzodiazepines, sleeping medications, muscle relaxants, antipsychotic medications. You need to be involved in your care and know about these risk factors because there can be a reaction between the medications that you take and the addition of narcotic pain medication. You need to be aware of other risk factors indeed. Being overweight, having sleep disorders, sleep apnea or snoring. Age is also a factor. As your age go up, so do risk factors. Smoking and other pulmonary and cardiac problems should be uh, problems that you think of. The use of alcohol in conjunction with medications can put you more at risk as well. So I want to explain the important rules of taking these medications as far as we in the clinic are concerned. First, take the medications as described. The directions will be on your bottle. Don't use expired medications or medications prescribed for another person. Tell us, your physicians, about other medications you're taking. Interactions are risky, and we want you to be aware of that and talk to us about these medications that you're taking. Don't take these medications with alcohol or other recreational drugs. That's risky activity. Watch out for taking too much Tylenol as well, because these can have side effects as well, and most of these medications have Tylenol or acetaminophen in them. It's important to reduce that amount of Tylenol as you take narcotics because it can cause liver damage. And usually we want you to take certainly less than 3,000 milligrams within a 24-hour period. Next, you must not drive or operate machinery while on opioids. That's just not a good idea. Watch out for the side effects of opioids like nausea, vomiting, itching, drowsiness, confusion, dry mouth, constipation. Next, one thing we're worried about is dependence or addiction to these medications. When you use them longer than the term that they're given for, they can affect your sleeping, your breathing, your heart function, and you may become at risk for withdrawal symptoms when you discontinue their use. Symptoms of overdose include extreme sleepiness, confusion, difficulty breathing, cold clammy skin, if you're worried or concerned, then call 911. Don't wait. This is serious business. So why do we think this is a problem? Well, in 2014, 240 million narcotic prescriptions were written here in the United States. In the last 20 years, the number of narcotic overdoses has quadrupled. And as I told you earlier, Idaho ranks fourth in the non-medical use of opioids. Every other day, one Idaho citizen dies of narcotic overdose. Six out of 10 of these are from opioids. We must change this pattern. And now, the rules that we support here at the clinic. We want you getting narcotics from only one physician practitioner. If you're on pain management contracts, let us know, and we will discuss this with your pain management physician. Secondly, Get your medications from only one pharmacy. If you use more than one, this is considered suspicious activity. Third, we consider six weeks the outside limit for nar narcotic use on a continuous basis. You should be off of these within three to four weeks, some people for just a, f a week or a few days. But if you go longer than six weeks, this is worrisome and necessitates a serious discussion with your treating physician and you. Other risk drugs include benzodiazepines, sleeping medications, as I mentioned before on our table, muscle relaxants. There are just a whole host of medications that can potentiate or make the medications you take more risky. You should have listed all your medications in your information sheet that you filled out. It's your responsibility to help us know what you take so that we can help you be safe. We're a team at this office, the patients, the office staff, the nurses, the doctors, but you're really the key. We want you to be safe, and you are the monitor. You and your partner is the first team, and your partner is your ombudsman. Don't use too much pain medicine. Don't use it too long. Don't start liking it. And be careful, as we have talked about today. 
what you take simultaneously, whether it is other medications or alcohol, you must be careful. And don't put other people at risk when taking narcotics, like driving or working equipment or making critical or important decisions. Let's be safe and let's be healthy.